Hey, what's going on, folks? We are live here during uh, the expo with Nick Tan. What's going on? Unmute my mic. Come on, let's do it. Yeah, can you hear me? Unmuted. What's going on, brothers and sisters? So happy to be here. Let's kick this off soon. It's a little before 1130. So if you're here and you're excited as I am, drop some comments. Let's make this an interactive experience for you and yours. Really, really, really pumped to be here because I often don't get to share this information in a fire hose. So I hope you have a notepad and I hope you're all ready because it's going to be a fire hose of information. It's going to be a little bit intimidating for those who don't maybe have a brand or maybe exercising a few things within social media and branding and marketing. But for those of you who are wondering who the heck I am, I am a real estate investor. My name is Eric Cabral and I also have a media agency called On Air Brands and a vent an event company called Podmax. So I am going to share my screen shortly here, but if you're here and you want to make a comment or you want to chat or you want to give a thumbs up and let us know what's going on, Scott, big, big friend. I haven't seen you in a long time, man. But yeah, I'm going to start and I'm gonna share this presentation and hopefully you guys can see everything. Give me a thumbs up and let me know where uh, you are and if you can see. And yeah, if you can go in the comments, let me know where you are. I see somebody asking me where I invest. I invest mostly in New Jersey. So I am always looking at new opportunities outside of New Jersey, but I'm very, very comfortable investing here at home. As most of you can imagine, you know, that is advice often given is invest close to home. So you can kick the sticks and knock on the wood and the bricks. So yeah, let's uh, let's get this started. Let's rock and roll since we have a short period of time here. Uh, whoever's moderating in the back end, what 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 do I have? How long do I have? Let me see here. And I'm opening up my thing here. Eric, get as long as you want. As long as I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and when, 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 when you wanna end it, just end it whenever you want, all right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't be that long. I really wanna, I wanna interact. I wanna have a Q and A and everything with people, so. I'll probably go for a good half hour, 40 minutes, and then we'll we'll kick it to Q&A. It's All good right. to see you, man. It's good to see yeah, you. Good to see you too. I'm running, I'm running like five minutes. Do, so. <laughs> do your thing, brother. Do your All thing. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen so you guys get to, to know me a little bit more. And then uh, let's see who's asking, can you see New York Post? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, oh, can you see my post? Yes, I see. I see. I see you guys. Thanks for jumping in. Nick is a brother from another mother. He's he's so good. I'm so glad he's doing this. Did you want to do a share screen? What's that? Yeah, I I think I had the ability to share screen here. I Try it. Here. If you don't, then I'll turn it off. For you. Oh yeah, I'm so glad you're you're here. Uh, let's see. Um, hold on. Let me uh. You let, not? Me, let me go into presentation mode. Yeah, it looks like I can. Let's I don't know if you can add it though. So I wanna I wanna I want you to put it on. I want oh, to yeah. add it. Let me let me do it here for a second. Um, share, dude. I can't believe you're running it like this, man. It's insane. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. But you know, it's our first time, and there's a reason why I did it on this platform. It's because it goes on Facebook, yeah, YouTube, I love it. all my Facebook pages, all my channels, and my, so it, I, I, I gotta talk to you after this, because then how do you how do you block it all off? How do you create it so? Because you know, social is open to everybody, and then you just make private groups. Multiple. You know what it is? Uh, what I find is that. Um, People have uh, people rather pay to see than to uh, have to search for things like the links. You know, they rather just have it. It's like it's, it's like we're charging. Uh, like if you have the promo code, it's only twenty five dollars for access to every, like fifty videos. Gotcha. You know, it's like so. It's all the all the recordings is great because then you could just cherry pick. And watch exactly, your leisure. Exactly. That's so cool. Versus searching around for all of them. Yes. So, so the but this is fun too. This has a little <laughs> bit of that excitement. I, I do really honestly wish we were at the event, man. I wish we were all up, up in, the, in the hotel and yeah, but this is good. This is good. It's a big experiment, but I think there's a lot of benefit doing it this way because afterwards I'm going to boost these videos. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's not just a few people that are tuning in. It's about the 9 million people in New Jersey. Right, 
Right. Yeah. 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 You're a smart, dude, man. So are you gonna desktop? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. So let's see. Hold on a second. Application window. Let's let's do that. Uh, where's my arrow? Application window. Share that. So then, if I go. Okay. Now I'm gonna add it. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then if I go presentation mode, let me see what happens. Uh, play. Can can you see me and that? I don't see anything yet. No. Is it working? Because I hit play and then it um it goes into full screen mode on my end, but yeah, sorry. Play that. again. Play. Because I didn't see anything. I saw it go black. Yeah. So right now it's full screen on my screen, but uh, oh. yeah. Go to the next not... slide. Let me see. You see anything? Nope. All right. You so maybe I'll, 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 I'll do it like this, like presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's no worries. That's good. All right. You good? Yeah, brother. All right, there's you, a comment section on the right corner. Uh, yeah. you know, the Q&A, and then uh, whenever you're done, just end it. Yeah, All right? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, thank you, Eric. All right, guys. We're going to rock and roll here. So I am going to share a ton of stuff, a ton that I've experienced personally, and I think I've distilled the things that happened to me during this entrepreneurial journey that I, I'm pretty confident will work for you as long as you start to implement them and start to really take them seriously. So... As I mentioned earlier, I'm the founder of On Air Brand, which is a media company, a multimedia company that does a, a podcast production and creation. And then we also do social media marketing for those podcasts. And we have some clients where we do just strictly social media marketing, but we really, really love working with our investors and the real estate investors in our community to help elevate their brands. So then all of that came to a culmination of events and events similar to this, but mostly focused around podcasting and it created PodMax. So I'm gonna get into all of that really cool stuff in just a second. So we're live now. And, and a little bit about me again, I said I'm an investor, I'm a creative and an entrepreneur, own multiple companies outside of the real estate investing a Mindato Investment Group. I also have the, like I said, on-air brands and then also PodMax. So then I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to move this window over here so that I'm not, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Okay. So I've been featured on multiple, multiple shows. These are some of the best ones that I've been on. And I wonder if I could close this thing out here on the side here, because that's annoying. I don't think you guys can see the whole, there we go. Let's just do that. So featured on multiple, multiple shows and absolute honor. You know, if you can get on podcasts, I highly recommend it because what you're doing is you're borrowing credibility. You're borrowing their audience. So the more and more you can do this, the more awareness you're going to create for you and your brand and whatever it is you do. So everything that I'm talking about here, although it may not be specific to real estate investing, this applies to all businesses of all types because every single business needs a brand. Every single business needs to market. So you have to understand that if you don't have a business that markets, you're not there yet. You know, you have to get to the point where now I have revenue that I can invest in marketing and in branding. Like the, the number that I have to throw around, and I've also heard it even higher than this, is 10% of your, your profit should go to marketing. You should put them in Facebook ads, Google ads, some type of vehicle so that you can start to raise awareness. That's the very first level. The very first phase of marketing is brand awareness, creating brand awareness campaigns. So we can get into all that in the Q&A, but I just wanted to touch upon that. So getting into podcasts, highly recommend, especially if you can get on the big shows. And one of the biggest shows that I ever get on got on was this one recently. <laughs> um, so this was a game changer. I was on the Bigger Pockets podcast recently and things are starting to explode. So that was a game changer and also a goal of mine for my entire entrepreneurial real estate investing career, a bucket list item that I was able to check off on because I love these people. I love the bigger pockets community. I love Dorkin and Turner and David Green and all these people who really influenced my life as a real estate investor and really changed the trajectory 
of, of everything that I was doing. So what an honor it was to be on the show. And yeah, it's this, this didn't happen overnight, folks. This happened over, over years and years and years of grinding out everything that I'm about to show you to eventually make it to the bigger pocket stage. So here's what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about roughly 20% are already probably halfway through my story. And then we're going to talk about the system that I've developed over time, which is an overview of everything. And then we're going to go into the nitty gritty. We're going to get into the weeds about that system. And then hopefully you can jot down questions or put them here in the comments. And then we'll just go, go, we'll have at it. Let's, let's, let's throw things around. Let's, 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 let's see what sticks and let's answer some questions that you guys and girls may have. All righty. So let's move along. So quickly, my story, I was in 20 plus years of corporate America. How many can relate to that? I mean, being in corporate America is a grind because not a grind in terms of work. Yes, there's work, but then there's also a lot of play, right? Because you have a lot of downtime. So what happens for, for me anyway, and for those of you who are still in, in corporate America, it's, it's a great place to learn on someone else's dollar, but at the same time, you can fall into the trap of your mindset being that water cooler mindset where all you do is talk about television, you watch movies, you go back into work and you're like, did you see that episode of Ozark? Oh, I just binged and I spent my entire weekend, 36 hours watching television and now you do it because everyone else is doing it. You're, you're, you're basically a reflection of your environment because now everyone, it's the normal. Everyone's talking about current affairs. Everyone's talking about television. And you get sucked into that sort of in, that, that whole ecosystem and culture, which for 20 plus years, that was me. Like I, I, my brain was not elevating to any sort of level of entrepreneurial building businesses. So that was rough and tough. And I didn't understand it until I took the purple pill. The Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad book changed my life. And then I got laid off for the second time. And I realized I need to take my future in my own hands and create legacy wealth for me and my family. And I created the Mindato Investment Group, which was real estate investing. And I wanted to figure it all out, but I realized I couldn't do it alone. So I started going to bigger pockets, started to go to events such as this and started to network and meet people and people that could help me and I could help them. Over time, relatively quickly, but over time, a year to two years, I started to build really strong relationships with investors and they started to notice what I was doing. They started to notice, hey, he has a brand and he has social media and he has content that he's creating. How is he doing all this? And I would break it down for them just like this. And they would say, can you just help me do it? I don't want to do it. You do it. And then that build, built and created on-air brands, which now became really a, a, a multimedia agency servicing real estate investors, but then now we have, you know, in the tech sector and all these different clients, but mostly real estate investors built this company uh, for me and helped, you know, just organically create. So we started to notice that podcasting was really powerful. And I started to do that with my own podcast, Entrepreneur Circle, and started to interview my partners and interview real estate investors. And, and mentors and coaches. And then that started to gain visibility and traction and awareness. And then all of a sudden, one client or partner came to me and says, hey, I loved my episode on your show. Can you do one for me? How did you do it? How did you create a podcast? So I would create it for one, create it for two, create it for, and they were friends, they were partners, they were clients. And I started to build a podcast agency, podcast company, on-air brands started to build, create, and produce podcasts for others. So then that became the main shift and focus and pivot into on-air brands really being about building and creating podcasts. As a result of that, it started to build a network of podcasters outside of real estate investing. And then it got into building PodMax, which is my current company. So anyway, Here's my story in a nutshell. I, 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 we could talk about this stuff here, but is, this is critical here. Building social media credibility, being on social all the time, being able to share and add value to people's lives and business. And then you start to get noticed, right? How did I get on bigger pockets? I got noticed. I got recognized. I started to network. I started to learn and know the people that run the organization. Bigger pockets started to get to know and be in a group and a mastermind with Josh Dorkin and Brandon Turner called Go Abundance. So now we're all Go Bros, 
and we're friends and we help each other and I can tap into this network. So more on that later, can ask those, answer those questions later. Real estate, started to invest in multifamilies close to home, then had an opportunity to invest in a winery. How cool is that? I mean, who would ever thought if I'm going in, hey, I want to flip houses, I want to buy small multis. And then all of a sudden an opportunity presents itself. My business partner, other business partner, Josh McAllen came to me during an SJ RIA meeting once and said, hey, I love what you're doing. Are you interested in being a part of this? And absolutely. So now I'm an investor in a winery that has a 50 room hotel, the third oldest winery in the country, and also has a golf course, full golf course, 18 holes. And we have, we have everything there. We, it's this gigantic venue that we flipped. Basically, it was owned by the bank. It was a hot mess, to be honest. They couldn't wait to get it off their hands. And we bought it, you know, uh, for a song. And then we flipped it. And it's absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend you go visit Outdoor Dining, all that great stuff, live music. So, Renault, go check that out. But then I, I, over time, started to build a team. And that team is critical. I couldn't do any of this by myself. The team was essential to me building these businesses, these multiple businesses all running at the same time with or without me. And then another critical part of this is actual press, getting on to podcasts, getting in the newspaper, getting on digital print, blogs, getting featured so that people will automatically know you as a credible source. All right. So I know I, that's my story. That's the 10 to 15 percent of what I was chatting about here. And then we'll, we'll get a little bit more into it. So uh, my network, critical, absolutely essential to building a brand and a business credibility, positioning yourself. If you're interested in positioning yourself as a thought leader, which I highly recommend you do. And this happened over time, folks. Matt Faircloth, Josh McCallan, Josh Dorkin, Turner pre-bearded Turner, met him several years ago. And just all these people are wonderful people, but then they also have gigantic brands. Is this all starting to connect? They have huge brands without me, without... And then all of a sudden I noticed if I start to associate myself with larger brands, just like I mentioned earlier, I can start to borrow the credibility. I can start to speak to their community and be associated with them. And then if people see me and hear me standing next to Dorkin, Brandon Turner, Matt Faircloth, they automatically trust me. And I love talking about in any business, in any relationship, in anything that you do, even if you're at a barbecue and you're talking to someone and you have no idea how much money they may have in their 401k, you are eventually, and you are actually, not eventually, you are right on that spot creating the cycle of know, like, and trust, which is the components of doing business. If someone knows who you are, boom, you got it done. You guys are watching me. You know who I am. America Brawl, founder of On Air Brands and Podmax. You know who I am. Do you like me? I'm giving you information. You're slowly developing some thoughts and opinions about me. Hey, this guy seems kind of cool. He's energetic. I like what he's saying. I kind of like him, right? But that happens over time as well. Because now you're going to go Google me. You're going to go find some other content. You're going to listen to my podcast. Now you're like, wow, I'm really liking this guy. I love his vibe. I'm digging his content. I'm learning so much. He's adding so much value in, in, in my life and business. Now I'm beginning to trust him. And what happens when we start to hang out again? <laughs> we go to networking events and you meet me. Hey, listen to your show. This was great. So all you're this, all you're that. Now we shake hands and you trust, you trust me. So that's how relationship and businesses are built. Okay. And it's critical. So where do you start, right? There's so many things There's branding, there's promotion, there's consistent content. There's all of this in your mind and in your head. And I wonder if I can get this bigger here. No, it's not getting bigger. All right. There's all this content, right? There's all this like products and press and everything you just mentioned, Eric, is absolutely intimidating. I don't know where to start. I have no idea where to start. So I'm going to clean this all up. This is a big mess. And let's 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 distill it. Let's let's create something really cool and also um all right. I wish we could do presentation mode because then I don't want to I want to go through this piece by piece here for you. But we'll do it, we'll do it like this. All right. I'll zoom in. 
maybe. So this is this is the branding system that I've developed. This is the road to the journey that I went on, but it doesn't have to necessarily be the exact journey, right? Everyone knows the journey isn't the exact blueprint, but there are pieces, there's DNA of the success blueprint. And if you could follow this system in whatever order works for you, and there may be only 50% of this that you do, but it's better than doing none. It's better than 0%, okay? So branding, promotion, having a unique product, consistent content, relationships, networking, press, maximizing your time, building your team, and of course, health, right? Because if we're dead in the grave, none of this matters, right? If we, we got to stay healthy. And, and then that's really the engine. You are the engine. If you don't take care of this, which is the temple that you live in, the house that you live in, obviously none of this matters. So we have to take care of ourselves. So I want to break it down and I wish I could do it this way, but okay. Let's zoom in. Yeah, let's do it on the fly. So let's let's zoom in. Okay. I want to talk about branding here. So you want to be the standout person in your space. You want to make sure that your content, the things that you're delivering to your audience, whether it's on Facebook Live or LinkedIn Live or highly recommend doing live, right? This is live. And video, 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 video has exploded. Why is it exploded? Really bandwidth. We didn't have the bandwidth for this five years ago. We weren't able to stream live from our phones everywhere we went at a property, you know, at a, at a, at a, at a, a networking event. We weren't able to do any of this because the technology wasn't there. So now people are modifying their habits. They're starting to pick up, especially now during COVID, people are home, they're listening, they're paying attention, they need something to consume. So I highly recommend you, you do not fall into the trap of being a consumer and you become a creator. So what does that mean? You have now positioned yourself as someone who has content that you're creating for people to learn, to educate themselves. I don't wanna bag on anyone that's consuming right now. If you're learning, I was absolutely there a few years ago where I was consuming as much content as I possibly could, but making sure that it was the right information. It was the information that could help move me forward, right? When you're reading a book and there's chapters, the story is moving forward. So make making sure that every piece of content that I'm getting leads me to the next step, okay? Con consumption of content that moves you nowhere, you feel like you're stagnant, you feel like you're running in place, reevaluate what it is that you're consuming, okay? There's good consumption and there's bad consumption is my point. So start to build a platform for yourself and a brand for yourself that separates you apart as a thought leader, okay? And I can answer questions for anyone who, who's thinking, but there's so many people putting content out there. We can get into that later. We can, we can definitely, absolutely, and I have answers to that because a lot of people ask me that. So we have Facebook. The next thing is promotion. Using these platforms are critical. You have to jump onto these platforms. If you don't have an account for your business on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on all these platforms, no one's going to know you exist. No one's going to take you seriously. People aren't going to real uh, think that, hey, this guy has something going on or this gal has something going on that I want to be a part of because you're going to look like a, a, a non-credible a, a, a non source, someone that hasn't had the track record yet. So how do you do it? You just keep doing it and eventually you build that credibility over time, right? When I, like I said, I was in corporate America for 20 plus years. I did not have credibility. What did I do? I borrowed credibility. I sidled up to Matt Faircloth. I sidled up to uh, to all the people in my network that were around me. Steve Chatto, who's here. You know, I used to shadow these folks because I wanted to be and I wanted to do what it is they were doing, okay? So... This is the stuff you can do. Go on Facebook, go on LinkedIn, go on YouTube and show people what you're doing. Show people that, hey, I'm active. I'm, I'm, I'm analyzing deals and here I am. I'm at a property with Matt Faircloth. I'm at a property with Steve Chet. I'm at with Nick. I'm doing stuff with people that are credible, okay? So then we move to consistent content. Creating consistent content is critical because if you're doing it once a month, the algorithms, and this is a funny word, but yeah, because everybody throws it around now, but yeah, on the back end, 
Facebook, Instagram, YouTube aren't paying attention to those who only put out content every once in a while. They want to see engagement. They want to see people constantly engaging with your constant, uh, your content, liking it, sharing it, making comments within the feed. If they start to see movement where they, where there's fire, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if Facebook sees a fire, they're going over there and they're throwing gasoline on it. Trust me. They want to, they want you to be successful because their platform becomes more successful. LinkedIn is really, really hot right now. There is more than smoke at LinkedIn folks. I Rick, I can't tell you how powerful it is right now. I'm literally dropping videos spon spontaneously and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of views overnight. I mean, Facebook, that took me a long time. Now with LinkedIn, it just happened. So they're doing something over there where they're really throwing. They're, they're, they're showering gasoline onto your content so that people start promoting it and talking about it. So grab LinkedIn, do your thing on there because it's really, really powerful right now. All right. So... Where else? What else? What else we got? Oh, unique product. What do you have, right? So for me, I have podcasts. I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book, which I'm going to launch. And there, these aren't all my things, but these are ideas for you. And, and, and real estate is your product. If real estate is your product, that's a product. And how do you make it unique? Think of ways uh, that separate you from the pack. Right, I have I have investor friends and partners that are into mobile homes or into micro homes or they're into notes. Right, that is a unique product. There aren't a lot of people talking about notes and distressed notes and things like that. Where this space is riddled with obviously flippers and wholesalers, and you know that's a really good entry point. But if you can start to give people options in investing, they're going to listen. Bitcoin, you know, insurance. Uh, whole life. There's a lot of different vehicles to invest. So find that niche, find that unique product that you can get passionate about and get behind and, and start marketing that product if you're looking for one. All right. So relationships, this is my favorite. One of my favorites is relationships. So others promoting you is massive. And that's what podcasting does when you get on a podcast it's 100% if you're on the right shows, which most of them are, they collaborate with you. It's a collaborative conversation. They are there to help you win. They're literally putting you on their stage and they're giving you and your content to their audience. So they love you for that. They love you for, hey, this is Eric Cabral on our stage and he's going to bring a ton to you. He's going to give you so much value. You're going to now credit me for it, the host. So when you get on shows, then you're getting the host. You know, I was on uh, some of the biggest shows I was on was Fair Joe Fairless's show, and then obviously the Bigger Pocket show and Whitney Sewell's show. They have massive audiences. I'm talking tens of thousands, if hundreds of thousands of downloads per episode. When is the last time, or where is the opportunity where you're going to get to stand on a stage and talk to hundreds of thousands of people? You're borrowing their stage and they're giving it to you. That is a gift. Take advantage of it, all right? I can't stress how important it is to get on podcasts. So then getting featured on other shows or having your own show, that's way more work. If you want to cre create and produce your own podcast, it's a low barrier to entry. You can go buy a microphone on Amazon for $30. But the thing is being consistent, as I mentioned earlier, is, is important. If you can't commit to six months to a year of creating content or, or or setting something in your mind, like I'm going to do 100 episodes and then I'll see where I'm at. There's something called pod fade where the majority of people who create podcasts don't get past eight episodes. Don't be a statistic. If you're going to create a podcast, commit to it. 100 episodes, you know, one year, whatever it is, commit because eventually you're going to realize it is a business and it's and it needs systems and it needs teams. So that is... I was a little bit digressing from relationships here, but yeah, branding through association. I talked about all this stuff, so we'll move along, but you have to build a relationship. You have to build a network because if you don't have a network, then you don't have business. You don't have people that are going to give you business. You don't have people that are going to invest in your, in your deals and you don't have people that you could borrow their credibility. So it's important to constantly, constantly network. Let me help you with this really quick. 
networking now, okay, during COVID. And I hope you're 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 ready. You got the the pencil. You're licking the pencil and you're ready. Okay. Because check this out. People are asking me, how the heck do I network now? There's no events. Where am I going? Yeah, there's this event, right? There's virtual events. There's events, and if they're doing it right, connect you to people. They connect you to others so that you can now do business with each other. It's an abundance mindset for those of you who are one. You have to adopt an abundance mindset where you're not thinking about what's in it for me. You're automatically listening to someone and thinking, how can I help that person? Let me pay attention to what they're saying and figure out what their pain points are. What are they struggling with right now? Oh, I just recognize that Steve is talking. Oh, he needs a virtual assistant and he doesn't realize it yet. So then uh, you let them talk, you listen and with the intent of helping. And if you can do that, if you can start to say, hey, Steve, man, it really sounds like you need a virtual assistant. Here are a bunch of companies that I use. Here's one that I know of that I passed on, but she's great because I have now I have three, literally. And you can start to share with people your network that you've been building, the people around you that you know can help. And then that person in turn says, whoa, thank you for connecting me to Steve because now I, my business is growing and his business is growing. And what happens? You take credit for it. You get the love for it. And the more and more and more you do that, your network is so powerful over time because of the abundance mentality. I'm telling you, when I shifted to an abundance mentality, that changed my life. All right. So relationships, press. <sighs> Here's a funny thing. Press, for me, since in a di we're in a digital age, it's crazy. And bill billboards, television spots, newspaper articles, to me seem antiquated. I'm like, yeah, who the hell wants to do that, right? I was on... When we launched PodMax and we started to do events, my team started to reach out to people and say, hey, can you feature Eric in your newspaper? Can you feature him on XYZ? And I thought it was kind of a joke. I was like, let's just do it. <laughs> people still read the paper. People still go to these things. They go to these platforms and they they reached out. They saw what I was, they read, I read your article in the Princetonian or I read it in the Trentonian where they read it wherever and they reached out. It works. So if you can do it and find out people who PR or, or someone on your team that can reach out and give like a bio of what you're doing or how you're, you know, giving to charity and, or your business is giving to charity, something where they can sink their teeth into and love to put it on their, their platform, then absolutely do that because a lot of people don't do it. And so it's, it's not popular right now. So you don't, you have less competition. They're looking for, they're looking for content, um, blogs. If you can do blogs, if you can write blogs, if you have a podcast, take that podcast and turn it into written word. So I do that. I, I do it for other shows where we take the transcription of a show. We give it to a writer. The writer takes it and massages it and makes it into an article that highlights everything that was spoken about on that show. And now through the magic of SEO and all the algorithms and all the stuff that if you put it out there, your podcast has now become, or your podcast guest as you were a guest, you can transcribe that and make it into an article with permission. Then now your reach is going farther. Your reach through SEO and the algorithms and all the stuff on the back end will now get to see you as a content creator. Here is this person's name and the name of their company. When you Google, you're multiple pages. So the more and more content you put out there, the more YouTube, the more blogs, the more podcasts you're on, the more your name and your company gets out there, the easier it will be for people to find you and to instantly go into the like, no like and trust right away. So when they meet you, it's business. Maximizing your time. This is, this is powerful. You have to understand and understanding and doing what you're best at to make money and build your business. So if you're not a creative and you know, like I'm not great at creating a logo or I'm not great at writing blogs, these aren't the things you should be really doing. I highly recommend that you focus on the stuff you're great at. So if you're a left brain analytical person, you're saying, Eric, all this stuff you're talking about is creative. I'm a left brain analytical. I just like process and building and 
doing all the stuff that creatives don't like to do. Focus on that. That is your superpower and bring that power to others. Then you, the stuff that I'm talking about, you find whose superpower, who do I know in my network has that ability and you partner with them or you hire them or you figure out a way that you can add value in their life so they can say, okay, hey, looks like you're giving me a ton. How about I reciprocate and do this for you? There's ways that you can tap into others that you recognize, but you have to be able to see that opportunity or see the person for their strength and then ask, really. Just figure out ways, how can we how can we help each other? How can we work together? And then you start to fuse and fill the gaps in for the weaknesses that you have from people who have strength in that weakness, your weakness. All right. And that will, maximizing your time, I mean, focus on the stuff that you're great at. 90% of your day. Okay. The team is critical. And we're getting into the Q&A, folks. So I hope you have some questions. Start throwing them in here. Start throwing me questions and I'll, and I'll go over and I'll start to uh, cherry pick and hopefully answer all of them. But yeah, if you've got questions for anything I'm saying here, please put them in the comments because I am winding down here. We're getting down to the final two. All right, so team, <clears throat> as a lot of you may, may be solopreneurs, solo entrepreneurs, as I once was, building a team and having people around you, and your team could be just one other person. A team could be your VA, you and your VA. A team can be you and your real estate agent. A team could be you and your wholesaler. It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that you're paying directly or hired uh, to work under your umbrella. A team is your network of people that do what you don't do or do what you do better or, you know, focus on aspects of the business that you need so that you can do other things, right? So as an investor, say I am focused on flipping, but I need properties. So my team, it consists of a broker, several agents, several wholesalers, you know, private capital, Though that's your team, you have to start to understand the team, the title agency, all these folks that you started to connect with. So when you are ready, they are at the ready. When you're when you have the deal and you're ready to pull the trigger and start to do do projects and work, now you can tap into your team. You have to build a team. You have to build a roster of people on the bench so that when you're ready and when you're you're busy and you're you're cracking other deals and you're figuring out and you're analyzing other stuff, the team is at work on what it is that you're giving them. Right? So the team is important for building and growing. And you have to find the right people. You have to find the people in your network that you trust. You have to find the people in your network that you know care about you and what you're doing because whatever it is you're doing helps them too. Right. So building a team, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in any business, is obviously critical. Where have you gone to a company where there was one person? Maybe they're not, it's not necessarily a business, right? They're freelancers, they're gun for hire. So that's not a business. It's, it's a, they're, they're freelancer. All right. So nothing wrong with freelancers. I, I was a freelancer for a very long time. All right, well, how do I move this? My arrow, where did, aha, yeah. Health, come on, folks. Nobody likes to talk about this. I like to talk about it because it's so important. If you're not taking care of yourself, none of this matters. If you are, and and I am not judging here, but I, and I'll say I was this, eating Doritos, drinking soda, watching Netflix all day long, over time, what that's going to do for you, your mindset, your body has a compound effect and you'll notice it. You'll look down and you go, oh, whoa, what heck, what, what happened to me? It also affects this exercise, wellness, meditation, yoga, all this stuff affects this, your mind. If your brain can't function, it's going to fall into dark places as some of you may be experiencing right now with all of this craziness. You have to stay positive throughout this journey because if you're not putting positive, non-toxic information into that mental factory of yours, 
how are you going to survive the marathon? How are you? Because the entrepreneurial journey is not a finish line that we're going to get to. There's a peak at the summit that we can stick a flag into. This is an ongoing journey for the rest of your life. Okay. When you get to that peak and you put a flag in, you're going to look up and go, oh shit, there's another freaking mountain that I have to climb. This is a continuous journey. How do we survive the marathon? You train, you exercise, you eat right, you, you pay attention to the stuff you're putting into your brain. Positivity. Don't fall into the trap of all this negative social stuff that's going on. If you find yourself into chats where you're chatting and you're fighting with people over and over and over, how much time did you just waste collectively over weeks, months, years? You probably lost days, days or weeks or months of your time. Use that time to build something. Use that time to create. Use that time to network. Use that time to connect people to others that can help each other. Use that time wisely. And I'm not, when I'm talking about health, I'm talking about mental health. I'm talking about psycho psychology, spiritual, physical, nutrition. Everything is I'm talking about is health. And that you need in order to become successful in any way. I know so many people that are successful monetarily crush it in finance. Multi-millionaires. They're a miser they're misery. They they are not happy people because they're not taking care of their health. They're not meditating. They're not doing any type of exercise. Over time, this is going to affect you, folks. And what good is all that money if you're dead? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being blunt. What good is all of this that you're building if you're in the grave or you're in the hospital and you got tubes up your nose? So, folks, please, please, please take care of yourself, especially now. Now is the best time to start paying attention to the way, you know, take your, if you're in the risk category, if you're afraid of what I do, honestly, people, I am not afraid of this COVID stuff at all. I'm a healthy mofo, right? I was sick with the flu. Um, and I think I had it. I fought. I knocked that shit out. <laughs> okay. I killed it. I crushed it. If you're at risk, do something. Stop eating crap. Start exercising, start reading positive stuff, start feeding stuff into your mental factory that will move you forward in a positive way. Start meditating and listening to YouTube. Go to YouTube is, oh my God, I love YouTube for the guided meditation. I love YouTube for Tabata and HIIT workouts. Go to YouTube, subscribe. It's well worth that investment of $15 a month or whatever for YouTube premium so that you can shut your phone off and listen not watch, listen to positive stuff. Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Jim uh, Rohn, all these people in your brain every single day is going to move you forward. Trust me, it's going to move you forward. So if you're around people in your environment and it's tough because my spouse or my kids and all these people are negative around me, tune them out, put some earbuds on and listen to good stuff every day when you start your day. Very first thing when you wake up, Listen to positivity, listen to great stuff, listen to people that can move you forward and inspire you to be bigger than you are and to keep moving forward. I know I'm on a soapbox right now, but this is so important, folks. I, I want you to be healthy. I want you to live long and I want you to succeed. So this is probably right now to me, the most important thing that you can do is take care of yourself. Okay. Take care of yourself. All right. So with all of that, I think I'm coming to the end here. Yeah. Where are we? Boom. Recap. Let's do the recap real quick. Oh, man. This is tough. Yeah. Recap. Boom. So case study. What's the case study here? Is me. I was a case study. I'm a living, walking example of everything I just spoke about. So maximize my time, right? I made sure that I wasn't spending time watching a ton of Netflix. I made sure that I was reading books. I made sure I was networking. I made sure my time was being spent wisely so that I can move the businesses and myself forward. And then there's branding. Build a brand. Build a tribe of people around that brand. It's really, really, really important. Then be consistent with your content. When you build the brand, now that brand needs content. That brand needs a story. That brand needs value that it's adding to people. And it needs to shout from the mountaintops, hey, Here's what we do. We provide housing. We provide a vehicle for you to invest your 401k. We do the X, Y, Z. If you don't have a brand that has content that's shouting from the mountaintops, how are you going to get business? How are people going to even know you exist to do anything with you? All right? And be, be, be consistent with it. And promotion. That's all the same thing. Promo, pro, promote yourself. A lot of people have imposter syndrome. That's okay. Like I said, leverage other people. 
leverage their brand and start to associate yourselves with them and you'll build the relationships. Okay. You'll start to build the relationships and the credibility over time. It's not going to happen overnight, but trust in that, trust that process. Then you want to have credibility through all this. You want to show people, Hey, I may not have done this project on my own, but me and my partners, me and the folks around me built this product. Now that you're a credible source, they're going to start listening to you. Your friends and family are going to go, Hey, I didn't realize Jim was an investor. I thought you were working for, you know, X, Y, Z company. Build the credibility over time. Start doing that. Build your credibility and let people know everything you've done. It's okay to brag. I like to call it humble brag. Humble brag all you want because they need to know that you've knocked it out the park. They need to know that you've created something that is worth paying attention to. Then the team, the team, the team is critical. If you're working in a silo, if you're working in your room, build a team. It's virtual. I'd say more than 50% of my team is virtual. I mean, you see physical people in this photo here. Yeah, absolutely. It's great. I love building culture in person, but there are tons of people that are working overseas for us. Tons, tons. Are you kidding me? I think Honor Brands is almost completely virtual, right? We have some managers here in New Jersey, but most of them are, are, are overseas or in Europe. So leverage what's going on. There's so many people out there that need work and they need you and press. The last thing is press. It's getting on podcasts. It's getting featured or looking for opportunities where people can talk about and help what you're doing, doing it through vehicles that people aren't paying attention to. Mostly I'm talking about advertisers are not paying attention to these vehicles anymore. So get in there, start sharing your story, look for somebody that can help you with that. Maybe say, like I said, a PR a firm or someone who has connections, you know, someone on my team has a connection to the press. So I just say, Hey, whenever we have a story, can you share this story with the press? So that's it for my time. I hope that this had some value in your life and I'm going to throw it over here to the questions and start hopefully answering and I appreciate all of this. Holy smokes. Where's my arrow? I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing. Boom. Boom. Oh, big face. All right. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? How can we contact me? Oh, uh, <laughs> I would give out my email, but um, admittedly, I'm really bad with email now because it's, it's, it's gotten crazy. So I need, I need help. I need somebody to <laughs> sift through my emails and tell me what to pay attention to. So I wouldn't recommend uh, uh, emails, uh, but you, if you want to look for podcast production and creation on airbrands.com, so then there's info there. And then if you want to get interviewed on podcasts, then you can go to podmax.co. It's more than just getting interviewed on podcasts. We, we, it's a huge network of people that are like-minded and they want to help each other and they want to grow together. We have masterful keynotes. We had Gary Vaynerchuk's team come in, the president of Sasha Group come in, and he spoke and taught and just gave so much to our tribe. And uh, we have, oh, I sure not know if I announced this yet. It's not, nah, I won't, I won't announce it, but he's a huge guy in our space. He's coming soon. Um, and yeah, yeah, podmax.co. And yeah, those are wonderful ways that you can reach me and my team. And uh, da, 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 da. what's the best platform for blasting out a podcast? So it, Mike, I wouldn't get caught up. This is by Mike Rust. I wouldn't get too caught up in the platform. They all basically do the same thing. So there's Captivate, a friend of mine who has a company called Captivate.fm. That's a great platform. We use Anchor for a lot of our stuff. It doesn't necessarily matter. What matters is the content. It matters. What matters is the consistency. So I would just choose one and, and push it out. Uh, content is king, as you know. How do you know the current trends in your niche to build that content? I'm assuming Abi uh, PD is is a real estate investor. So LinkedIn is the platform for all businesses because it started out as a business to business, right? It started out as a platform for businesses to find and recruit people. But now it's becoming, if you haven't noticed already, a social media platform where people are being social. People, I think, have moved from Facebook in droves, like they're doing in the cities, moving out, moving out into LinkedIn because LinkedIn is really, they have really been pushing for this to be a social platform. That's why they are giving the tools for people to go live. They're giving the tools for people to, to create more content like that, that are integrated with stories and all these new things, not new, 
but new to LinkedIn. So they're always expanding the tool set. I highly recommend you leverage LinkedIn, but not in a way that a lot of people are abusing it. People are abusing LinkedIn too by just blasting generic direct messages to their contacts. Don't do that. Go one-on-one. -on -one. Look at someone that you're interested in connecting with. Look at their, their, their experience. Maybe they have contents. Maybe they have blogs. Maybe they have a podcast. I highly recommend you listen to some of their stuff or read some of their stuff and reach out and say, I liked this specifically. That's the power of LinkedIn. Getting deep into relationships and not playing the numbers game. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Abby. I appreciate that. Uh, da, 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 da. When can we get together? I don't know who that is. You did you, you with StreamYard. I love StreamYard. You have to hit that link so that it, so that you're recognized here, um, uh, your name and all that stuff. But uh, Mike, Mike says I overcame six cancer surgeries. Wow, and redeveloped my body mentally. Oh my goodness, I'm getting emotional here. And have been back to martial arts and still wow, got back to martial arts and still rings gymnastic. At the age of 73, good for you, Mike. Wow, I am going to take your phone number. Thank you. Let's chat, man. That's sick, dude. You're an inspiration, my, my friend. That is powerful. Holy crap, I'm getting chills. That's so good. Mike Feldman. Yeah, brother. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're an inspiration. All right, I'm just taking your info here. Mike Feldman. Oh, that's so cool. All right. What we got? What we got? Joe. Oh, Joe Chan. I know you. Uh, would love to get you on our podcast. Yeah, hit me up, brother. I have. Oh man. Yeah. So, okay. For anyone, if, 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 forgive me. I'm apologizing in advance. Here's my email. I may not be as responsive as I should be or not as quick, but yeah, hit me up. Eric, E-R-I-K at onairbrands.com. But like I said, um, it, it, it may take some time for me to get to you, but I will get to you, Joey. So hit me up, Eric, E-R-I-K, at onairbrands.com. Yep, and that will, good. okay, great stuff, da, 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 da. stunning print. Thank you, thank you. Oh, look at all the love. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it, folks. I guess I answered all the questions, I think. I hope I didn't miss anyone. Uh, oh, somebody says, yes, I've used Anchor. Oh, because Gary recommended it. I highly recommend this StreamYard for live video content. We use this for one of our shows, our live shows, and blast it like Nick's doing to several. We blast it to YouTube, LinkedIn, um, Facebook. We have several Facebook pages. So it's it's great because you're doing this, and it's pushing it out to multiple channels at the same time. So this is a powerful platform, StreamYard, uh, is really, really, really good. So I'd highly recommend using this platform. And also, let's see. An yeah, Anchor's great. I love Anchor. They just got bought by Spotify. So you know and and can trust that Anchor as a platform is going to blow up because Spotify is blowing up. Spotify is really taking podcasting seriously, whereas Apple was sleeping on it, even though they created it. So they're, they're putting a ton of resources, time, energy, and money into it. So Anchor's great because now it got bought by Spotify. But yeah, yeah, folks, this is it for me. The time flew by. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you for coming in and joining me. As I mentioned, you know, I hope I didn't disappoint because I know that it's a, it's a real estate investing expo. And thank you so much, Nick Tang, brother from another mother. He's just crushing it always. But yeah, I, I, I love talking about this to our community because I'm an investor myself, but also no one talks about this stuff. No one is chatting about how powerful branding, marketing, networking, your health, all of that stuff that I just spoke about is critical to all businesses. So yeah, if you want to talk to me, you want me to present to your clan and your tribe, more than happy to reach out to me. I gave my email out, reach out and let me know because I love sharing and I love helping people and I want everyone to benefit from everything that I'm saying and everything that I'm doing. So, and also check out that Bigger Pockets episode that I was on, episode 64. I tell my story there and um, it was, yeah, it's it's crazy being able to say that I've been on the, that show because uh, it, it was it was a, a goal of mine from day one. So thanks to everyone who already listened and everyone who's been here and who's watching and supported and asked questions here. Appreciate you all. And yeah, Mike, I'm going to be in touch. Let's let's do this. And I'll I'll talk to you guys on the next event. See you soon.